Hey, everybody, and welcome back for another episode of The Overlay, a poker podcast, a poker podcast about poker. Hey, everybody, I'm Ken, your hostess with the mostess. I love it. Ten seconds in, we're already off the rails. Mm -hmm. Speaking of rails, today's episode. I did. did. Today's episode, we're going to discuss some poker piracy that happened from the rail at the WSOP main event, the tournament of tournaments, the biggest event of every year. It is the pinnacle of the poker mountain. uh, And there was some there was some shenanigans going on, maybe. Or other people might just say that was studious behavior. I'm not even going to delay. We're 48 seconds in, Brando. I want to hear about, do you want me to describe this scenario, or are you going to hit yeah, You go up? for it. You go for it. You, you fire it out. Yeah, I've never been this on point ever in the podcast, the, the history. Uh, hey, everybody, this is Ken. Uh, overlay, half co-host. So, the WSOP main event just finished. When did it finish, Brandon? A couple days ago? Like Main event? I uh, only last week, but yeah. Okay. So we have a main event winner. I don't I don't know his name. Seems like a nice guy. Jonathan Tamayo. Nice. He's our 2024 main event champion. Yeah, Jonathan Tamayo. There we go. Nice guy. Looks cool. Uh big bracelet. A lot of money. I like he's holding the money brick up in his uh victorious uh, you know champion's picture for the WSOP. Um, I did not watch any of the final table. I just have not had an opportunity to do so. And like so many poker players out there, I buy my poker go subscription like in the middle of June and watch it for a couple of weeks. And then I never watch it again until I want to watch something in the WSOP and realize that my subscription has expired. I think it's worth the hundred bucks, 90 bucks. Is that what it cost? Uh, I don't know. I've, 90. Been 10, I've been paying $10 a month since 2015. Oh, same difference. I think if you do the, the, the season long pass, I think they get it down to like half price. So maybe you should think about doing that. But with that being said, I will watch some of the main event as it goes on. I'm just not in the mood to do some main event watching at the particular moment. But there was a lot, a lot of discussion, not only at the main event itself, but at at the WSOP, and there were many instances of um, solvers being used at the table, and then it really hit kind of the biggest aspect of, of our game, uh, where during the main event... At the final table, televised largest, largest, probably the largest payout in all of poker every year, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, considering buy-in per payout, I would say it's the largest. There might be other ones, but regardless, um, largest field. You know, this is the top of the poker mountain. During the final table, during it all in or during breaks, Jonathan, correct, the, the winner? Yes, sir. Correct. Was going to the rail to hang out with his rail birds, which are what poker groupies are called when you're sweating your boy or your girl in a tournament and you're hoping to get some of that uh, post victory uh, party going on and, and you got to hang out the whole time to do so and you got to be supportive. They had a la- his rail birds had a laptop out with a solver up going over and going through the hands from the live stream, which is on a 30 minute delay, which means. At points throughout the tournament, during the whatever, breaks, all-ins, yeah? Yeah, how yeah, many, yeah. How, how many players were left? Like, obviously, this is not like heads-up play. This is like, you know, f- four, five, six-handed at times. I mean, did he do it the whole time? or? Um, I'm not. That's a great question. Okay. I was only aware of it heads-up. Yeah, I, I get that. But if there are like six or seven players left at the final table, and obviously there's a lot more heads up that you're not involved in, would give you time to go over to the rail, look at the laptop, and study and go over previous hands from the tournament that you are currently playing in. Is that okay? Because he's looking at hands. Now, granted, they're, these are past hands. They happened 30 minutes ago. But should a player be able to use a solver at any point during the final table ergo on their phone when they're just sitting outside of a hand are they allowed to look at solvers uh to 
to Jonathan's point, his kind of workaround was, well, I don't, I didn't use it at my phone. I didn't use it at the table. I just went over by my buddies who happened to have a laptop up with the solver open, checking out post hands or previous hands from the table and players that I'm currently playing with. Is this legal? Like per the rules of poker? Um, is it ethical? Is it executionable? Meaning, you know, should should something be done about that? I, I don't know. Uh, Brandon, what what are your thoughts? Okay, so A, mm-hmm. there is a rule in the WSOP that states that you are not allowed to use a solver at the table on your phone while in the tournament. Okay, so they, that, the tournament director makes that announcement uh, before every let's, tournament. Let's just pause there for one second because I want to discuss that briefly. So hold on, solvers and charts, like all in charts. Meaning, if you just had a picture of it on your phone, like oh, I got fifteen big B, big blinds. Let me pull up a chart and see what right. hands I'm supposed to shove and what hands like I'm not. Like a PDF or something, right? For sure, not okay. allowed. Yes. Meaning, and a solver, just so people know, because I I've never seen a solver in real life. That's where you like like old school like put in the hands and see what the the odds are or like it get you put kind in of. you like put in a range uh-huh. and then like you know the other person's range and it, it calculates like what what you're supposed to do or you can put in a hand and um you can put in your hand and their range and then it'll tell you it'll spit out like what you're supposed to do pre-flop what you're supposed to do on the flop like oh he had king deuce and he raised pre-flop and the flop came this Assuming that my opponent's range is this through this, what does the computer like me doing on the flop turn and mirror? What's my most optimal game theory? Yeah, that's what it is. Game theory optimal play. Chat GPT. It's the poker version of uh, (laughs) Skynet? Yes, basically. Nice. Okay, so it is illegal. (laughs) It's a weird word. It is against the the rules in a WSOP event to use a solver at the table picture software whatever the fuck you cannot sit at a table and look at a solver however if you get caught doing so what happens i mean i'm assuming it's the same thing of bringing any other rule yeah it's a warning i don't know if there would be a warning or you just go straight to penalty since that would be a little bit more and then you know, maybe the speech before the tournament is you'd the have warning. to get caught like three times it's like a three strikes in your route rule minimum twice It'd have to be egregious to go from zero to penalties. Uh, I don't think there's any instance in which it would go all the way to disqualification. It is always up to the tournament director, and that's a hard rule to put on the tournament director. But I find that the maybe the penalty doesn't – so maybe, and that's not really my feeling. Players, the, the Twitterverse, the Xverse uh, of poker is, is claiming that it's not – it's not a big enough penalty or a big enough uh, deterrent to players to go, okay, you're going to get a slap on the wrist, and then you're going to get a mildly harder slap on the wrist. And then if you're really bad, you may or may not get disqualified, but the tournament director doesn't have to go warning, penalty, disqualification. I mean, they can go warning, penalty, 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 right? Like, it's not like they have to go. They can always kind of decide or no. Is that not how it works? No, no, that's correct. Yeah. Like if I it, mean, with something like that, I, and being a tournament director, I would be a little harsher. Well, that's the, that's the thing. So that uh, the, you know, the poker players of X are going. I think this needs to be a harsher punishment than what we currently have. Of oh, you got caught using a solver during a hand by other players in the table at the spot that you're at during a tournament of ten thousand dollar p whatever. And then they just go, okay, don't do that again, Jimmy. Otherwise, you're going to have to sit out for 10 minutes. Yeah, no, I think they're saying it should be worse. For sure. I think like the first offense right off the rip should be a a some kind of penalty penalty or something like that. And then then that's like your final warning. I like it. I also kind of feel like maybe they should do something else. Like if we're I don't. Making the penalties more harsh, I feel like there are instances, and it, it never fails. The rules are kind of set up for people that that truly don't have good intentions and don't know any better. Like maybe some guy from Nebraska is like, well, I didn't know that I couldn't use a solver on my phone. 
Uh, I don't know if people in Nebraska sound like that. And I apologize to anybody in Nebraska listening if that's what you do sound like or don't. Um, maybe the penalty should be slightly more specific. Like, okay, it's a warning and you now lose your phone or electronics at the table for like two levels. Yeah. Like I physically cannot use my phone, not not during a hand, not like like you physically, like your phone is locked up, like you're out. You don't get you don't get electronics. You're back well, in, like 19, in high school when you got caught. You're 1980, exactly like high school. The teacher is going to take your phone, stick it in their desk, and you could pick it up at the fucking end of the day. Yep. I kind of like that. That would be a cool thing. All right, so that's kind of step one of this this conversation. Is it, um, you know, do the is there checks and balances between the penalties and 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 yeah, how beneficial is it? Crime. Right, and is it that beneficial? I mean, is it? I guess it is, right? Like, if you again, it depends on the situation. So it, that's the argument, right? That is right. the real question. Like, is it even beneficial or to not? To me, no. I I don't I don't know how to read them, so it wouldn't be any fucking better for me. I'd be better off just you know do whatever I do. But are we talking about an instance where I'm in a hand, player goes all in, and I look at a solver on my phone and go, okay, I have ace, king, the flop was queen, jack, two hearts, I have two hearts, what, whatever. I put in the information, and I go, this is what I think he has. And then I'm looking at it during my decision? Okay, see, that... that That's that the most egregious. Ex- yeah. That's bad. And that is extremely helpful. Real-time information... You just turn into a computer then. You go from a human being to a computer, which to me seems like very much cheating. Wow, and you used a word that I don't like to use very loosely. In, in, in your mind, the situation that's that I just cheating. described, yeah. that's cheating. And again, that's the most egregious, like, that's mm-hmm. no, no, the I, farthest I, you can go on the scale. I did. In uh, the middle of a hand. That's the extremity. Right, that's the extreme side of it going... I'm all uh, players all in. I have a decision. I'm the only player left with action. It, you know, it's late in the tournament, whatever, whatever, whatever. Not that it would make it any better if it was like level one, but still like maybe uh, it is obviously much worse when it's towards the bubble. Yeah. I mean, that seems like that if the, if the penalty for that is warning, I feel like then it's not, that's not a harsh enough penalty to deter players from doing it. I mean, think about like a chess tournament. You can like scan the board and then the computer tells you your next move. Oh, yeah. That would 100% be cheating. Yeah, for sure. Definitively, it's like, the same without thing. a doubt. I don't think anybody would do so. And I guess the argument here is like, well, does the po-? like, I don't think of solvers when I think of poker because I think of poker of like, it's an older era. Like, I don't, I don't, I didn't grow up with computers. I'd, I mean, I'm right at that Gen X age, right? Like, I'm the last generation to grow up without technology and then be fully immersed in technology. Now, we are this weird hybrid of, I didn't have a cell phone until after I graduated college. Like, I couldn't use the internet as a, like, we didn't have the internet in college to, like, do shit. Like, it was still, like, eight fucking websites and, like, that was so you it. You couldn't use the source on a research. A hundred percent not. Not until I was a senior in college, two thousand two, was I able to. And at that point, if we had to have three references for a paper, one of which could be an internet website, and we like still called them like, one of them can be an internet resource. Like who the fuck says internet resource? Like that's just weird. Now everything's internet. Like, <laughs> now it's like, you know, it's so right, commonplace. A source. What is this? This is source. Right, you actually went to the library? Like, I know who the Dewey Decimal System, I know how that works. I could go to a library in the apocalypse and fucking find books where Bran is going to go, <laughs> I'm fucked. No way. I used I used that little, you, I used like a card catalog. Yeah, it's Dewey. That's the Dewey Decimal yeah. System. Yeah, he's great. I love Dewey. He's my favorite of the the three uh, duck you know, like kids. 96.38. It's like mm-hmm. something in the third row and the seventh column. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super cool. Yeah, see, I got this shit. Be that as it may, I don't put a lot of stock. But when you referenced it just there, I, I when you sit when you talk about chess, right? There's a I think there's a more there are less options on your plays, which means the computer is going to play it the 100% most optimal way to play it. It doesn't mean it's the only way to play it to win, but it's like 98 or 
but it's that's the best what way. poker's become. It's become it, all my stuff. question is: Is that how good it is? Is it that? Is the computer that good? So, or is it somewhere yes, in the middle? It, it's that good, but it's only based on your the information, right? Where Whereas it's like your chessboard has all the information. It's visual. It knows where every one of their pieces are. It's visual. Yeah, like you. It you, knows where no, every one of your pieces are. There's no gray area. There's no quantifying. There's no like guesswork in it. Like I'm looking at the board. I can see all the past moves. Here's what it is. Bing, bang, boom. This is like where if, you should go. If, if the guy's putting in that Brandon only is raising in this spot here, ace 10 suited plus and pocket eight plus, right? Those are the hands that it's putting my range in. And I got pocket fives or I have ace two suited or something not in that range. Then the computer doesn't spit out the correct information. Whereas like when I do have ace jack suited and I'm in the range, it puts out the exact right information. But, you know, if there's if the person's assumptions aren't accurate, then the information is inaccurate. Meaning what the what the computer's spitting out is not going to well, be the computer's spitting as out is beneficial. Only spitting out based on what you put in for right. my range. And if I'm playing something that's not in the range, the, the information is way less useful because it's making because assumptions. It's, on you're not using answer. well, right, because you're not using the you know, the information's not accurate, right? Yeah, uh, it's like taking certain pieces off of the chessboard that are actually there. I, I mean, I, I we can go down this analogy. So for sure, yeah, in yeah, my yeah. in take, my go, mind, three pieces off. I don't computer, like, see. I, there. I don't see how it's as. But be- I see it's obviously it's a benefit. Like there's no doubt about that. Nobody can argue that it's not a benefit. How beneficial it is, I'm still in that kind of old school world where I'm like eh. marginal at best. Yeah. I know marginal at best. Right? Is it giving me an edge? Absolutely. Am I a fifty three percent better versus forty seven? But to me, fifty three forty seven, it's still a coin flip. I get it. The t- the the couple of times in a hundred, you're going to win an extra out of me. Is that really going to deter me from doing something? Probably not. Also, is it going to make the decision easier for me if I'm 53 and you're 47? Not like not to me, it's still a coin flip. Like it's just, it's a flip. And you know, I, I don't put as much stock in solvers. I also don't, I've never in my history of my life looked at a chart like that. I mean, I kind of understand what they do, but when I look at those charts, the first thing that comes to my mind is the blackjack like poker card that you take with you the first time you go yeah, to Vegas. Yeah, for sure that's shaded and to try to know probably. like if I have yeah. 8 8, but again, this is a card and information that is significantly more definitive. I know my two cards, I know the face card of the dealer, I can add those three uh, those information together and go this is the most optimal way to play. Whereas and chess is 100%. We know all of the information. No doubt that's the best way to play that rest of that game. Blackjack card. It's very, very certain that this is the way you should do so because you have almost all of the information at hand. Poker, on the other hand, I get the idea and it definitely makes your decisions better. And if you followed the solvers, you would probably play better poker. But my feeling is where I start to lose, you know, kind of faith in these GTO type, you know, charts, it's the information has got to be good and we don't have access to said information. So it's like, how do you rely on something that is based off your intuition? Why wouldn't you just go off of your intuition? I know I've turned this kind of into a solvers discussion. Well, but... it is about solvers, but I have another, I have a counterpoint to you. Go ahead. So the guy, so Jonathan. I have a counterpoint, then I have a double. I have a counterpoint to that. Ooh, point. nice. A, they were probably using complete information because they were on a half hour delay, so they were then firing okay. up. So this is a little bit different situation. Had. So what Jordan Griff had, the guy that got second, and what Jonathan Tamayo had, the guy that got first, and then showing if Tamayo played the hand correctly with all the known information. So they probably have more information than guessing with ranges because they're putting in both hands. That's A, but B. It's a fair. It's I a would, super fair point. Like a I would, super fair B, point. I would argue that. I would argue that knowing if you play the hand right or wrong a half hour later doesn't matter much to if you're going to win or not. 
Right. Maybe you were tired. Like maybe you, you made a them mistake. Them getting that information. Them getting that information of, oh, you played the king three suited good, but then you played the eight four off suit bad the next hand. Okay, you should do it differently this next time around. Right. Like, okay, sweet. That maybe makes him slightly in the slightly more prepared than Jordan Griffling heads up because he isn't know if he's making those mistakes. But like those hands are never going to happen again. It didn't help him Mm -hmm. for anything more than preparing for future hands, which to me seems like a mood point, a mood point, a mood. I, I mo mood. Like it's like, it's uh, moot moot. Yes. Like I'm on, I'm agreeing with you that I don't think it helped him much. I think when you describe the situation that you just described, that I'm looking at previous hands and trying to gain information about current possible hands in the future, you're right. Just because you played the king four in this situation, does it kind of help your decision making? Probably. I mean, it, it, it can't. I mean, it, it could have hurt. I don't think. I mean, I guess some people could argue that it could hurt your decision making. But like, you're going off the idea of like, all right, we've got complete information. We're putting it in. This is how this person played this hand in this scenario. Well, maybe. They won't do it again next time. Right. So there's not enough statistical um, information to go. Okay. Over the last 1000 hands, when he played this type of range of cards, this is kind of what, what happened. We're taking a very small subsection of like one hand and going, I'm going to base information off of this one hand. Like that's the, it's stupid. You, it, the sample size is too small. You're not going to be able to get, again, you don't have enough information to make a, make a difference. In my mind, you don't have enough. Yep. And I just Plus. came to that conclusion after you making that that, that kind of argument. And, and I 100% agree with you. I do not think that is a huge fucking advantage. Plus, I also think that the solvers are solving as if the opponent is playing GTO optimal as well. So like it's they're a whole nother their, aspect. So like if this Jordan Griff guy who got second is kind of just playing his own crazy, not crazy, but his I own personal mean. style right. of heads up play with $10 million on the line and isn't necessarily falling, falling what the computer would spit out for him. Well then the computer that Tamayo is using is going to respond differently. Correct. To, somebody playing their own way as of the computer, assuming that he's going to play the way that the computer would play. Even when you try to explain it like that, it sounds like an Abbott and Costello routine who's on first because that's exactly what it is. We are using a computer software, which I get it in theory. You're like, Oh, I can put in hands and it'll give me the best ways to play it. Awesome. Does that help my decision-making process? Absolutely. How much does it help? Well, now we got to worry about, you're guessing on what the other player has. And then you're guessing on if the player is consistently doing the same thing with those hands. And is the computer based on them playing game theory optimal poker against you because that's all they're basing us off of? We don't know if that's true or not. I mean, if they can't do a Ken theory optimal, there's fucking 0% chance you're going to guess what I'm going to do. I have no fucking idea. I played 18 hours in a tournament, the horseshoe, and then flipped for $15,000 in eight seconds just because I was like, I, I, my brain went dead for a minute. We talked chop. One guy didn't want to chop. He's like, I want to chop the short stack. I was a short stack, but we were like two to one chip ratio. And I mean, I've told the story before. I'm like, yep. all right, cool. When we're small blind, big blind, we're going to fucking jam it all in. No looky, no looky, no peaky. See who wins. And if I win, we chop it. 15, seven a person. Okay, deal. I we flipped, I lost, and that's it. They chopped it four ways. Is there a, could a computer have put in that information and figured out what I was going to do? No, consistently, absolutely not. I mean, and I think it's something to be said. Like, let's just say, like, it was me, or it was you, or it was Ryan, all versus that guy. Mm-hmm. Like, we would be doing completely different things than each other. True. Even so if like, we, even if each of us thought we were playing game theory optimal poker using solvers in uh, studying sessions to like whatever, even at that point, the human factor in poker I think is too high. Solvers help. I think if you play with a person long enough and you put in all of their hands that you one hundred percent remembered, like if. We just so happened that next year, Jonathan Tomeo and Jordan Griff and Nicholas Estent 
who are the top three players of this year, and John, Jason Siegel, let's say the top four. Let's say they all do the same shit. They all happen to play like a lot in the in 2025, and they all end up at the final table again, and all four of them are in there, and you've got thousands of hands over the two years to figure out what Jonathan Tomeo or Jordan or whomever does. At that point, do you have a large enough sample size to possibly impact the turnout of the tournament? The result of the tournament? Maybe? Even more then, so, I'd go more so maybe than, than now. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You're getting closer, but I feel like you'd have to have. And then again, it's like, again, we still go back to the idea of just because Jonathan played ace four suited at this time in the tournament does not mean that in the exact same situation one year later, full well knowing with all this information, this is what he did last time. Doesn't mean he's going to do the exact same thing today. Even, so, it doesn't matter. Like it, it's you can't predict that part. So then I also have one more thing on top of that. Oh boy! Where, well, I'm just saying, like we haven't even talked about the fact that, like, at the end of the day, they're playing poker, and it's all it's there's still like a whole random subset yep. of probabilities throughout the hand. Whereas, like, okay, cool, he shoves king ten suited, and the optimizer says you're supposed to call with sevens. Okay, cool. Well, now he shoves king queen. He shoves king ten suited. You call with sevens because the optimizer says it's right. Well, now it's a fifty fifty, right? For four million dollars. So now, because your heads up in the main event, right to the solver, right? You've now have a fifty one percent chance of winning the tournament because it's still going to be a flip, and that happened. Jordan Griff got it all in versus Tamayo king ten versus sevens. He had uh, Jordan Griff had sevens for the win. And lost the race. It's like you can't tell me that the the solver helped in that situation. I mean, that's again, you can't explain that the solver actually helped in that situation because, again, okay, great. You're telling me my best case scenario is I'm 51 to 49 for four million dollars. Meaning, if I lose, they get six million. And if I win, I get ten million. Me and you would probably be like, "Fuck it, I don't care. I get six million no matter what. Here, let's rip this shit. See what happens." Um, but I'd also be extremely tired after 11 days of play. And I know I probably can't beat any of those guys heads up in the long run anyways. So my best chance, is, we talked about this, right? My you best chance is to pick a flip. I want to pick a flip and I want to flip for it. And I'm cool. Was there any talk? I know there was a lot of talk last year about chopping uh, towards the final table, which obviously is unofficial and not... Uh, something is that something that happens at the final table? I know there was talk last year about how that they played so, it out, and that but there was a chop like at three or four handed. They a- any discussions they about it last that? year three ways because of the outrageous payouts because the WSOP wanted to be twelve million and one dollars for first, so it was twelve million and at first and like four or something or five something like that. Yeah, whereas I this year could, it was. I guess I could look it up, but go ahead, keep it going. was ten. It was ten six four this year. Yeah. So it was much more spaced out. Oh, yeah. It was 12. One. Okay. So 2023 was 12, one, six, five, four million. They chopped it three ways. Yeah. So that, at that point, there was an $8 million difference between third and first, meaning if you hit third, again, woe is me. I only got four million. But when you're leaving $8 million on the table, and then from second to first, it's just shy of $6 million. It's uh, 5.84. So, yeah. So this year was a little bit more. 12, 1 minus million, 65. Million, million. Yeah. That's fucking bananas. Yeah. 55. 10 to 6. Obviously, $4 million is a lot. And we're arguing over a couple of million dollars, but it's a couple of million dollars. Like, I don't need a fucking solver to figure out that that's not an opportunity that I want to go too nuts on. But this year, they're saying because the payouts were a little bit more appropriate, they went better. Yeah, because last year they would have had twenty two million dollars to split, twenty three almost. So chop that up. That's eleven million dollars a piece. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, you'd be an asshole to not do that. First place is twelve million. Three away no, shot. No, it's not. 11, no, it's not eleven million. It's Seven million. Twelve and ten is twenty two. Twenty two divided by three. Yeah, it's like seven. Seven change. point three. But again, here is the thing: seven point three chop three ways versus six. 6.5 second place money, like it seems yep, like a no brainer. You got to do better. 
it seems like that at that instant you you again you don't need a solver you should probably just chop it how do they chop it though like i don't know because i'm i've always wondered about that because like with taxes and and things of that nature i wonder what like i would always be afraid to go to the main event not even the main event because I'm I'm never making it to the final three of the main event. But like, let's say I played in an MSPT I mean, 1K, right? And first place is 180 thousand, and second place is what, like 90, 95? Sure. Let's just say 100. Yeah. 180 to 100. Okay, me and Billy Joe from Nebraska. All right, Ken, we're gonna go ahead and uh, you want to chop <laughs> this. 280. What do you got against Nebraska? I don't know. I'm fuck Nebraska right now. I'm, I'm all about them. I don't think we have any Nebraska <laughs> listeners. So maybe this will spice them up to start listening to the overlay. My fear is, okay, we chop it. 180, 100. That's 280. Chop it up. That's how much per person, Brando? 140. That seems like a really good chop. Cool. Okay. Well, first place prize, first place winner. We're going to play it out. Obviously, they get the trophy and the accolades and the check for 180 thou. But I now have to collect forty thousand dollars from that guy to to chop. How do I know he's going to pay me? And if he does pay me, and here's the same thing, according to the government, when old boy from Nebraska gets a ticket from the whatever casino you're at, it's gonna be for a hundred and eighty thousand, which means he's paying taxes on a hundred and eighty thousand, not a hundred and forty which is why casinos don't do the the chopping for you because it's a much different and harder thing. Um, I, it makes me nervous. We're not talking about an early bird tournament where you're just doing it right there at the table and you get chips and you go cash out and it's fine. You don't. It, it's it's um, it's easier. Like that first time I played in the WSOP at the Horseshoe in 2008, they did a twenty five hundred dollar PLO. This is all my stories come from that tournament, and one of them was this random Eastern European guy. It was probably fucking, uh, you know, Ernestus or something. We just didn't know who he was twenty years ago. He's just like, oh yeah, you want to do a thousand dollar last out? I go sure. And oh, there's twenty eight guys of the thirty five current entries that are in it. Wow, that's an extra twenty eight thousand dollars in the prize pool. Like fuck yeah, I'm in. Here's my thousand dollars. I hand some random Eastern European guy a thousand bucks and just go, cool, thanks. I don't know if he asked for my name or anything. Like he, I, I had no idea. Like it was such a trustworthy thing. Long story short, I feel like they should have solvers on how to do that versus what was um, going on at the so, main event. So the thing with last year's WSOP is they had like a full twenty four hours before they played again. So I'm assuming they got lawyers and just signed up contracts and stuff, which I'm assuming it's almost easier to do it in the WSOP when you do have 24 hours compared right. to like an MSP. Did you actually have time? You have to do it on the spot. You, you could call minutes. a turn. Yeah, you could call a lawyer and be like, hey, this is what we're doing. Write this up so everybody's happy and you got a little time to double check it. Call your dad or whatever, you know, for sure. Figure that out and say like, hey, is this a good idea? Um, which is cool. You're right. But. Again, my the worst case scenario is that middle ground where you're talking about a couple hundred thousand and I gotta collect thirty or forty or fifty grand from some kid or guy yeah, or that's, person that seems the worst. and just be like, fuck, how do I know he's not just gonna bounce and be like, Oh yeah, I'll hit you up tomorrow. Oh, uh, because that happened. I, I, um, you've heard horror stories. I, I've told you it was like an it was in an LA casino where like the guy the guy's like, Oh, we'll chop and then shipped it and then said uh Fuck you, I ain't paying. All right, as, uh, security escort me out. I'm leaving. Take a take a plane to the airport and get out of there, or take a limo to the airport. What are you gonna do? Yep, nothing. How are you gonna prove it? You can't prove it. You're trusting on on uh, you know whomever Smart. whoever wins is gonna actually pay it out. Yeah, it's weird. And then you start talking, hearing stories about chop outs uh, where it's like, okay. The third place guy's actually going to sign for first place money. So he, right, like you hear weird shit like that so that they pay the tax on it. And the guy who actually wins doesn't pay the tax. He's going to sign for third place money, but then he's got to collect first place money from the guy who actually finished third place because the casino is only going to give first place. It, it's a wild, wild thing. My feeling is if I got into an MSPT and I would just play it out, I'd just be like, hey, man. Uh, unless I unless you got forty grand, you can give me right now. <laughs> I'm out. Let's just play yep. it out. Like I mean, I get it. It sucks to risk that money, but I feel like 
to me, that might You're be less semi free roll. It's less risky than the risk of feeling like I got the money and got second place, but at least I chopped and I got 140 instead of 100 for second place. And then to get fucked on the 40, I would be like massively upset. For sure. All right, back to solvers. So the solver for Brandon and I and chopping is is probably pretty clear. Uh, I think you brought up a lot of good points. I love the fact of the idea that you said, like, even if with all of these factors, it's still not a huge benefit or a tournament changing, you know, reactions here that like, cause there was like some people are like, he should be disqualified and the money should go to second place and blah, 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 blah. Like people went like, like off the rails, nutty. And he did it like right on TV, right? Like it's right. Like yeah. it's, it's on TV. Like, and again, it's not, it's not in the rule book currently. Is it a gray area? Maybe. I guess that could be the argument we could talk about. It's not really, um, it's not against it's more the rules. Unethical than it is illegal. It's gray, right? Like it's weird. Like, should you be doing that? Probably not. But everybody's got the ability to do so. And then there was then then the talk changed from that to uh, which I don't even know if you kind of heard that. Like they were signaling Jonathan during the hands. Um, Jonathan's the, the gentleman who ended up winning ultimately that he was being signaled from the rail of like, oh, we entered this into our laptop solver that you're only looking at previous hands-on, but we're currently doing all the information live. So like they have the live information at some point, he just can't see it. But if they're sending baseball type signals to him going ear, ear, nose, slide across the ship, steal fucking second here, right? Like that, that's a whole different story. That's a whole, that's a whole nother, which I think is a whole nother level. They're going to come out and just, you know, set a precedent, make a rule change, say that solvers in general are banned Mm -hmm. from everybody involved. They're not even allowed in the room or in the area. I just want to go on record saying that in the picture, his winning picture with Jonathan and his chips and his bricks of money and the big giant belt buckle that you wear around your wrist, it's fucking huge. Like nobody could actually wear that as a bracelet. They have like the stage area. Right. And there's like the little advertising screens um, like around the table that you can see in the in the background. Guess what the uh, the advertiser is. Uh, Some sort of solver, obviously. GTO wizard. Yeah. So, again, it's like this convoluted thing where it's, you know, I can't I can't think of an analogy, but like we're talking about this. I can. I can. It's kind of like, you know, when a guy, when an athlete gets caught betting on sports, but it's like uh, ESPN Sunday night baseball brought to you by DraftKings and FanDuel and sponsored by bet ESPN and make all your parlays here. And then every commercial you see in the game is Kevin Hart advertising DraftKings and somebody else advertising this betting Mm -hmm. website. It's like, well, yeah, it's brought like, and then you look in the background of Wrigley Field. And, and then you like, won't let Pete Rose teams. in to the Hall of Fame because he bet on the fucking, on his own team. He bet on the Reds. It's not like he bet against the Reds. He didn't bet on the fucking Pirates or the Cubs. Pete Rose like, fuck the Cubs. I'm going to I'm gonna bet on myself. And then he can't be in the Hall of Fame. Like, that seems, seems yeah. not cool. And you, and you wonder why these guys get caught betting parlays. And not even on their own teams. Just, you know, you wonder why. Because everything is surrounded by sports betting and sports. They're like, it's tough to, you know, the athletes want it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to keep them out of it. It's the same Um, thing. It's very interesting. I think in general, um, you know, uh, the the last part I want to briefly mention and talk about is all of this has built up into several different things. And the problem with solvers and laptops and all of these things is that the technology is so good right now and so portable and so handheld that we could have a computer in our palm of our hand uh, during a game that we're playing live at the table. And they talk about the technology band, uh, a ban on technology, meaning it's not so much that you can't be you can't look at your phone during a hand, but like straight up banning electronics at the final table. Obviously, they're talking about we should start with the main event final table because that's so like the f- crowd, it, the fans in the stadium, as well as the players 
uh, are not allowed to have any kind of technology on them whatsoever to ensure that there is no solver cheating possibility to happen. Is that too far? Is that not far enough? Is that oh, I mean, way out there? That's pretty way out there. It's pretty way out there. But I mean, if you're talking just main event final table and then go from there, well, then where do you stop? It's, next it's, it's, thing, it's, next stop is MSPT, followed by the Venetian fucking deep stack series. And ultimately, five years from now, fucking early bird at the Viking Lodge in Tinley Park with 33 people in it. And now you can't have your, 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 it's just, I feel like that's a Gestapo type way of trying to fix things that I is not going to actually work. People will go with like the, um, Who's the guy from Stones? Mike Mike Postel. They go yeah. like Mike Postel on them. They'll have like hidden things in their hats and wearing butt plugs that vibrate and tell you when GTO is supposed to happen. I was going to say that too. Butt plugs. Yeah. <laughs> I just I wanted to see how long it would take you before you mentioned anything about the fact that I I said that. But I mean I get it. I'm joking. But I don't think that's something that we can do is ban. And I also feel like you're, you're hurting the entire field. Like I am not going to go on eBay and buy a Walkman so that I can listen to music at the main event. Um, if I do so decide to play because I can't bring my phone to listen to music. I, I don't look at solvers, but I also, I also can't an iPod, right? I'm also, yeah, but here's the thing. I'm in the day and age now that like I physically and mentally do not believe that I could go 12 to 14 hours sitting at a poker table and not have my phone to play Wordle, Balls, Chess, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, do some shopping. Like, it's just zero fucking percent chance I'm not going to be... Yeah, you would just quit poker. I would stop playing. I would not play. I wouldn't Well, that's why it. you got to start with final tables. I get it, but make, at some point, do we just keep table, going? It's... Yeah, no, no, that's true. That's true. That's true. I, I now you're more focused. There's a reason to do so. I mean, that's a very fair, fair statement. So, that's... and all the money's at the final table, anyways, yeah. for the most part. Solvers, know, that seems like a good place to start. All but... the good stuff here. Uh, I think it's 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 kind of sparked a lot of discussion about solvers and technology and poker and kind of where we're at in the world of poker and. Uh, it's interesting. I think next yep. year will be exciting to see any of the changes that we have because solvers kind of seem to be a lot of discussion about solvers this year, more so than any other year. A lot of people getting caught at the table looking at things that they weren't supposed to, and none of them included Pornhub or other adult websites. For sure. I mean, they got to ban OnlyFans at the table. Like, you can't look at OnlyFans. <laughs> no, you're allowed to look at OnlyFans, but you can't look at GTO Solver. I just, it seems, it's. Am I allowed to read the Super System at the table? Probably. I mean, again, I, I and again, I'm, I'm being a prick and trying to play devil's advocate here. I, I feel like there's a better answer. But maybe instead of banning, phone, my problem is I hate when laws and rules massively hurt the people that didn't do anything wrong as well as the people that did something wrong versus like I had mentioned earlier in the podcast. Okay. You got caught with a solver. You lose access to your phone. It's going to go in a locked bag in the fucking cage. You can pick it up tomorrow in 24 hours. Like you legit 24 hours. You're out. That would be cool. I would dig that. Then you're punishing the people that actually did something wrong. Like versus... something like that, you're way more you're you'll get on board with that more so than like punishing the whole field. That's my point. I would rather punish yep. a person that actually f did something wrong versus let's just punish the field preemptively to make sure because cheaters cheaters going to cheat no matter what. You make rules up, cheaters are going to find a way to cheat. That's just life. That's the way it is, and some people don't believe that. I believe that that you can't stop cheaters from cheating. They will find a way to cheat. 1920s baseball, they put bacon fat on their brim of the hat to get more slider in the slide. Now, Lord knows what they're putting in there and what. You know what I mean? Like, it, they're still going to do it. And you, you penalizing the rest of the field, you know, now you can't wear baseball hats because people put 
substances on the inside of while pitching. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of what we're going with. And it's like, well, that doesn't, doesn't seem fair or make sense. Is that too far off into the realm? No, of- especially, no, especially since like in general, over the whole 10,100 people in the main event, I mean, how many people are really pulling up solvers? Six, 12, 20. I mean, it ain't 1%. Point, let's put it that point, way. It's not 1%. Point something percent. Yeah. It's it's right. not one percent. It's not one out of a hundred here. It's probably one out of a thousand. Uh, one out of a thousand. So that yeah, would be or one like, out of five hundred. Sweet, twenty people. Yeah, twenty five people. Wow, that's, that's okay. Like, so we should come up with a way to punish those twenty five people and correct. leave the rest of us to listen to iPads and watch only fans and do whatever. Ban their yeah. Take their phones away. You got caught with a solver on your screen while sitting at the table. Bam, twelve hour lockdown. Six hour lockdown. You got a six hour lockdown between now and then. You can pick up your phone at the lockdown area of ridicule poker players where you get to be thrown cabbages and rotten tomatoes at them as they walk up to get their phones. Like, just give it to those weird old guys on the walkway between the Venetian and, or I'm sorry, between uh, Bally's. Uh, it's not called Bally's anymore. Horseshoe and uh, Paris. It's great. <laughs> you know, those guys selling them fucking. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Batteries and. Phone chargers what? and yep, yep, phone yep. cases. Like, just give it to that guy for like five hours. <laughs> See if it's still there when you come back. Yeah, but still at the you fix. I break it, you fix it. I break man. it, you fix it, <laughs> or, <whatever>. <laughs> <laughs> or you break it, I fix it. <laughs> <laughs> you solve it, I break it. Like it's easy. It's easy. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for listening. As always, please come and see Brandon and I at the next uh, Chicagoland Charity Poker event. We are still in Chicago. This is the end of June 2024. Uh, We've got two more events in August, one event in September, and one in October. Come and see us if you're in the city of Chicago. Hang out with us. That's a good time to come and see Brandon and I. We'll teach you how to play spades, uh, maybe you know, do a few flips, stud flips, PLO flips. We'll play no peaky. We'll show you all the good stuff. Come and see us. You there. can teach us how to uh, use a solver. Oh yeah. You can teach me how to use a solver. You're, you, I'm an old dog, new tricks. You're, you're much better at that shit than I am, but it'll be <laughs> fine. Uh, I'll just, I refuse to learn. So don't worry about it. I'm basically a poker boomer at this point. Thanks yeah, for listening as always. Make sure you leave us a subscribe or follow us depending on what podcast app you listen to and uh, check us out on Twitter at the overlay pod. Other than that, Brando, give me the GTO farewell to get the most amount of subscribers off of this episode. Wow. You put me on the spot. Hold on. Computing, computing, computing. Farewell. all. See you next time. See you everybody. <laughs>